Hey Lennonpreneurs, here's another vlog for you that I was uh, so excited to do with Shelly Shepard from 100 Things To Do. Hello. And I just want to quickly let you know about Shelly's blog. So 100thingstodo.ca now has, the best one was 80,000 80, page views. 80,000 page views in a month. And how well is it doing on Pinterest? Uh, half a million a month. Half a million pins or? Pins a month, yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. So if you're a business and you're looking for a DIY um, target audience, you definitely have to advertise on Shelly's blog. It will give you a lot of traffic. <laughs> so today we're doing a little video about one of her projects. And what are we making today? We're going to make some rustic outdoor lanterns ready for your fall and Christmas decor. So these are a knockoff from another blogger, Amy Christ. Uh, and she, I guess, knocked these off from Pottery Barn. So we're just making a variation of that. Her measurements and sizes didn't quite work. So I've changed it up a little bit to make a, a tall and a, a staggered height outdoor lantern. So yeah, this is how you make one of these lanterns. Enjoy. So we're going to start with our one by one because this is going to make the base and the top of our lantern. So I need, uh, your base is going to be eight and a half inches square. I'm going to cut it after it's ready. So I'm going to start at 17 inches. So it doesn't look like much just yet. But believe it or not, that's your roof and your top. So I want a solid plank. So, but plywood looks terrible. So this is going to give you kind of the nice, uh, I don't know, rustic kind of cabin look with the seams like that. It's bigger than eight and a half inches, but we're going to cut it down afterwards. So this stuff, believe it or not, is almost better than nails. We're going to use Gorilla Glue along the edge here. We don't want too much to ooze out because then you can't stain over top. It leaves a, a terrible like a bleach mark on it almost and then the stain will not here. Hmm. I learned that the hard way. You <laughs> see my other projects with lots of bleach marks on them. Oops. So this is double what we need but we're going to cut it down afterward. Okay now we'll slide it. <laughs> so that's just kind of easy to plop that on there for that to dry and set. My second lantern. This is not how yours will look. Yours will look better. This one, my two by twos are 18 inches tall. So for my second lantern, I'm going to go a bit lower just so I have staggered height. So I think I'm going to make my second one about 13 inches tall. So I just have to cut my 13 inches. I'll need four of these. These are going to be your corner points. And I'll do the same thing as last time where I Take one and use it as a template. Oops. You'll need the connector to go in between here. And I know from my screwed up version that that's five and a half inches times four sides. So one, two, the back. The size four, and you'll need another four at the top. So we're going to cut eight pieces at five and a half inches. To the wood um, so that it'll go in into an angle so when I want to connect it to the base the screw will be on the inside so you won't be able to see it and it'll go into the base and make a really nice strong hold and then I'm just going to go down the center hole and we're going to do it twice on each side once to drill it into the base and then another one to drill it up into the roof So on the same side, we're going to keep all the holes on the same side so they don't show on the outside of your, your So We've got all of them 
pre-drilled top and bottom. We're going to go back now and cut down our base because that's what we're ready to, to drill into. Perfect. Look at that. Beautiful top and bottom. The sides are almost ready. Now I need to do a little bit of sanding to get this stuff off. It's harder once the thing is put together. So I just gave it a light sanding. You can do better sanding afterwards, but just enough to get the really scruffy, rough stuff off. You want your pocket screws. You can do this, by the way, by just gluing and screwing through the other side if you don't want to do the Craig jig, if you don't have one, if you don't want one. Uh, just pre-drill your holes because the wood cracks. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the bottom. It'll hold really well without, but I see all the other builders online say to glue and screw, so I better follow suit. We're going to put that on the corner. We want five and a half inch pieces to go in between, so we can kind of guesstimate. I don't think we're going to need to be in from the corner. No, nope, it's going to take us end to end, which is just perfect. So we rest that on the corner there. There we go. Now we're in. I'm just going to straighten it there, turn just a tiny bit. There we go. So we're just going to repeat that on all the sides. pocket screws again into uh, this bottom part. There we go. Okay. That side will be really, really good. So before we started filming, I cut these little tiny legs for the bottom of it. They are one inch by one and three quarters. It was just uh, leftover wood I had. Um, so it can be anything at all. It doesn't really matter. You're not going to see it, but it'll keep your, if you're using your lantern outside, it'll keep it from sitting in moisture because then all this wood will rot. And if you paint it or if you stain it, all of that will bubble up and wreck. Just having it a little tiny bit off the ground is going to protect it to last a little bit longer. And again, we're going to go with the trusty glue. I just put them inside a little bit. You can see them a tiny bit um, for decoration, but not close enough to know that they're not sanded or stained. And in this case, they're going to cover up my screws that I have sticking out. Okay, we're going to let that dry for a minute. So the weight of the lantern itself is putting weight on the little tiny legs, so they're going to adhere. I'm hoping my little cross bases are now have enough glue and gravity to let those dry. But the part that we're going to work on now is the little, uh, almost decorative top part. So this part is, I believe, five and a half, five and a half by four inches, and that'll make a perfect square. So I took my uh, one by four, cut it at five and a half inches, and then just cut it in half because I don't need a huge topper. Same with the four. I cut a second piece from the one by four at four inches, then just cut it in half. So that's going to give me a hopefully perfect square. We'll see. So we get it in. And we're going to pre-drill the holes because this is where the wood splits on you. Get my little, my little man out. You don't need a Craig jig for this. You could, but it's, it's pretty small, so I won't bother. long pieces are going to screw into my shorter pieces. Okay, so you've got it so that that should just go right into that angle. I'm going to use deck screws for this because uh, 
my lanterns are going to be outside. So these ones are coated or plated or whatever it's called so that they won't rust and make your... So I put my, my corner, my top square together. I used the deck screws. So they were two inch, two inch deck screws. So I just put them in the longer side. Um, sorry, in the longer side drilling into the shorter side. We're going to center it on top. I've pre-drilled two holes. We're going to center it on the top of the lantern. And again, using the two inch deck screws and the right drill bit, we're going to put that into place. There we go. So now your top piece is in place. We'll pretend that the rest of my side pieces are glued in. And oh, your lantern is done. Here you have, now you have the option if you want. You would drill a hole in your longer piece in the center and put some thick gauge wire around. Just loop it through the holes and bend it into place and that would give you a handle if you wanted one. Mine's just going to sit on the ground more like a, I guess a Japanese lantern. So this is going to be perfect for what I want it for. The next part I'm going to do is I am going to add a coat of stain to it. The cheapest and easiest stain you can do is called oxidizing the wood. <coughs> Excuse me. And to do that, you are going to mix, I have it just behind me here. Excuse me. A piece of steel wool and vinegar. And you're going to put it in a jar. And when you touch the wood with it, the wood is going to change color. Sorry, you have to let this sit for about three days. When you put this on the wood, the wood is going to change color in just a minute, you'll see. And what it's doing is it's aging the wood for you. So if you like the restoration hardware kind of look, um, that is going to be the cheapest and easiest way to stain this. I did it on this one and then sanded it off. Um, and it's for me, it's kind of a little bit too orange. There is another way to do this where you would rub a, a, a wet tea bag all over it to bring out some tannins in the wood. Then when you put this mixture on, it'll go a bit more gray. For my second one, because I'm not, I'm not so keen on that color for me, I am going to go with the dark stain. If you used cedar, 2 by 2s and 1 by 4s you wouldn't have to stain it at all. Just put it out on your porch uh, and uh, nature will, will weather it naturally. But because I use pine, it does need some kind of protection. So I'm just using a, a dark walnut here. Don't worry that it goes on dark because you are going to wipe some of it off. 